Our baby today is a five-day-old infant who um, at this point in time is in a, an awake, quiet state with the eyes open, looking. The first thing we want to do is just look at movements and look at uh, the baby's tone. The baby is predominantly inflection tone but has spontaneous movements in the upper extremities and also the lower extremities and is looking around, having some sucking movements. And so the baby's in the quiet, alert state. Then the arm should go into extension. And he's very interested in eating right now. And that's a good way for a baby to quiet themselves and to organize themselves as far as sucking and finding their fists. So that's a very good response. He doesn't like that. He blinks. So he does have a behavioral response to light. And again, if we repeat the stimulus, there's some, some habituation, so there just isn't the re response, and that's a good re uh, normal response to habituate, so that they're just, with repeated stimulus, there just isn't as much response. We can do the same thing with sound. He alerts to that, and he actually looks almost towards the sound, so it's a good response. Even responding to my voice. Again, he perceives that sound. He moves, and that's good. Okay. Oh. He says, I don't like that. Okay. You can see that having resistance as far as getting to the to the to the ear. What this maneuver is is just the eye should go in the opposite direction. The head is turned. So if I turn one way, the eyes go in the opposite direction. And that's a normal response. You can see that we can get him in full uh, range of motion and his eyes are conjugate, they're together. We would even do that in the vertical direction. Okay. Okay. You can see the doll's eyes maneuver is normal. Okay. Okay, he's got a good root. The baby is again in flexion. His hands are in, arms are in flexion, legs are in flexion. He's got good tone. He's resisting the gravity and uh, very interested as far as sucking. The uh, next thing that we're going to do is just um, examine the upper extremities. And we'll first of all start by just doing passive range of motion. And we'll just move the arms back and forth. Move the arms across the chest. And just see the amount of, uh, of tone in the upper extremities. What we're going to do now is just do arm traction. And we'll just uh, take the arm and just bring it up. See if we can extend and bring the sh to almost the shoulder off of the, uh, the mat, and the baby pulls back on that. Doesn't really like that. Okay. Do the same thing over here. You can see the resistance there. Okay. We're just going to do the arm traction. And again, you can see the amount of flexion there, resistance, and that's normal tone. The next maneuver we're going to do is the arm recoil, which will bring the arms into flexion on the chest and hold them there about five seconds. And then suddenly pull the arms into extension and the arms should come back into flexion. Okay, that's a normal response. We'll do that one more time. Keep the arms in flexion. And we'll extend the arms. Arms come back up into flexion. We'll now look at the, uh, the tone in the shoulder girdle by doing a scarf sign. What we'll do is we'll take the arm and just bring it across the chest and try to pull it to the shoulder. And again, there should be resistance for bringing it to the midline. And do the same thing over here. Should be able to get it to the shoulder, but not beyond the shoulder. 
And you can see that we're eliciting kind of a root and a suck. He wants to be able to suck, and that's a good normal response. This would be a normal position for a baby's hand, where the fingers are in flexion, the thumb is coming across, it's not a real tight flexion, and we can get the baby to open the hand by stimulating the lateral aspect, the ulnar aspect of the hand. Okay. And we're gonna kind of look at leg flexion here. Can it re leg recoil, just bring it to the hip. And then we're going to quickly extend and he should come back up into flexion. Do that one more time. He's got good tone, he's got good movement. Good spontaneous movements as far as back and forth. And look at the ankle. And we're going to do just range of motion there. No, no evidence for clonus. Okay. Now we're going to look as far as just stabilizing one knee and flexing the other knee. So again, we can look and to see how much resistance there is at the hip. That's a normal response. Do the same thing over here. Okay. And we're going to do a leg traction maneuver and just see that this should remain in, in somewhat in flexion. So there's resistance there. We're going to do lower extremity recoil. We're going to just bring the hips up in and the leg thigh into flexion of the chest. Hold it about five seconds and relax and then quickly extend and it comes right back up and recoils into position. We're now going to look at um, the popliteal angle and we're going to bring the hip into flexion. Okay, there you go. Hip into flexion here. And then I'm going to extend the leg. And really you should not get be much beyond a 90 degree angle. Should be resistance there. Let's do this side. And coming up and flexing on the, the thigh on the hip and then extending the leg and really cannot get be much beyond the 90 degree angle there. So that's good. That's good tone. We're going to look at the popliteal angle once more. We can have him flex his thigh on his hip fully and then we're going to extend the leg. You can see that we can get to about 90 degrees, not much beyond that and that's pretty normal. What we're going to do now is just do the heel to uh, head. You can see that having resistance as far as getting to the to the to the ear. Okay. Then we're going to do uh, heel to to ear. And you can see a lot of resistance there at the uh, at the knee and at the hip. You can get it almost up here. But again, there's a lot of resistance in that. Again, is a normal response. We can look at the Tone of the neck by going past range of motion to one shoulder and then to the other shoulder. Okay. And that's very good. Which with this will be as well. There's a good moreau. Okay. It's a very good moreau. Okay. All right. We pull it up. He should be able to get his head up here. And he does. Okay. Very good. All right. A little wobbly, but he's able to keep his head up for a few seconds before he tires out. And we can uh, look, test the posterior neck muscles by putting a little bit back and then see how he can pull up his head. He does a good job there. A little fussy. And then he brings his head up from being uh, flexed on his uh, chest. So head control is pretty good there. What we're gonna do now is just put the baby in, in the prone position and see how he does. You can see that he's um, moving his head from side to side and bringing his head up. So that right flex, good tone here in the head and the neck. Bring his arms back here and see if he can bring them forward. Which he's actually trying to do. He gets that arm forward, he gets his little buttocks up, tucked up underneath and his legs tucked up here. So again, he's got good tone and good movement. We're just going to put him in, in ventral suspension. Hold the hand, you can see he can keep his head up for at least a few seconds. Arms flexion, arms in flexion, and legs in flexion and extending. So he's not, not draped over my hand. So there is good tone here in the trunk. Then he just tires out a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to put him in vertical suspension. 
And again, I should be able to hold on to him and have strength here in the shoulder girdle so he doesn't just slip from through my fingers. So that's good, okay. Yeah, we're gonna look at the reflexes now. He's quiet. Get his leg into his semi-flexion and that's a good knee jerk. Do the same thing over here. See a normal symmetric response. And look at the ankle jerk. Now the way to do this is actually just tap on the bottom of the foot. And he has a good ankle jerk there. And we just tap over here. Okay. Good biceps. It's very hard to get a triceps on a baby because he, uh, there's more flexion tone and so it's hard to get the triceps. And so we can try that, but we usually don't get much of a triceps and we don't get much of a triceps there. Looking at the plantar reflex, it's important to, to go down the lateral aspect of the foot and just stay in the lateral aspect of the foot. If we go too much on the ball of the foot, then we get more of a grasp reflex. So it's important just to come down the side. And of course, he doesn't like that. It's kind of a, again, coming down the side. Relax the toes here. Come back over here. And there's the upgoing toe and fanning the toes, which is the normal response in the newborn. Okay, there you go. Okay. He's got a good suck. I'm looking for that. That's a good suck, okay. We can actually demonstrate a root by just stroking the side of the face. It should seek for that, and it's seeking for that, and that's a very good root reflex. I'm just looking for that, okay. Very good, okay. We can listen to the Moreau reflex by having him relax unsuspecting and then give him a sudden stimulus. And there's a good Moreau, quiet and headline, midline. And then just get the stimulus of dropping him back a few inches. And that's a good normal response. Okay. One other reflex we're going to do is the Gallant, which is the incurvation. It's just stimulating one side of the trunk and the trunk should go towards the stimulus. We're going through the shirt here, which oftentimes is, there we go, and the buttocks or the, the body moves towards the stimulus. Here's a good strong one on this side. We're going to do the walking reflex and see if he'll take some steps here. Okay. Bring some steps, there we go. All right, okay, all right. Look at the position of the hand. The hand should be able to open and close, but most of the time it is in the closed state, but not a tight closed state. We can elicit a grasp reflex by again putting the hand right there in the thumb, and again the baby is able to grasp. We can open the hand by stroking the side of the hand, and then just stimulating a grasp reflex just by again putting the hand right there and have a grasp reflex. Okay. Now I'm seeing a good grasp reflex there. This is a good grasp reflex there. In fact, you can simulate the grasp reflex and then lift the baby. If we can get him to be quiet there, you can see he's almost pulling himself up as far as the grasp reflex and able to hold on with that hand. As far as just putting pressure here at the ball of the foot and the toe should come down in a flexion, which he does. And should grass. Let's look over here. And you can see that there's a grass reflex. What we're going to do is just look at the shape of the head and notice that um, a newborn baby can have a little bit of asymmetry because there's some molding, but we can outline the shape of the anterior fontanelle. Here's the mitopic suture, coronal coming down into here, and then the sagittal coming back in here, and of course the other coronal suture coming back here to the lambdoids, which the sagittal would come and the lambdoids coming back into here. Feeling the sutures, all of that feels to be very normal. Um, and the position of the ears, all very normal. The forehead, again, normal position. Okay, very good. Measure his head circumference here by doing the greatest 
occipital frontal circumference. So we need to make sure that we measure right here in the frontal area and then the occipital area. And his head circumference is 35.8 centimeters. Okay, so that's very normal, very average.